Hello, John Wright here again for Wilcom Discovery and Deco Studio 3. We're going to look at some auto digitizing in this video. Recently on a Wilcom blog, there was an article about creating a new leaf design or a design called New Leaf uh, by converting the vector image that the customer is or the digitizer received and uh, converting it to stitches. Uh, and you can see it says in the article here, it was a vector file. It was just imported into Deco Studio and converted to stitches. So we'll just scroll down. Here's the file itself. And we'll roll down a little further. And this is what the program has completed. I thought we'd look at it a little differently today. And we'll actually screen capture from this web page. Now that's going to be a raster file or a bitmap, JPEG, PNG file. I'm going to use the snipping tool, which is a Windows tool. It's a, a screen capture tool. So you'll find that in your programs, just snipping. And we'll just capture this design. Another program I like to use is Snagit. It's great for this sort of stuff. So we'll simply copy that to the blackboard. And now open our De uh, Deco Studio and go straight to the Corel graphics side of the program. Now once that's open, it's just a matter of edit, paste, or control V for paste. And while we're in Corel, you can do as much editing as you like. But for, first of all, we'll convert it to a vector file. I'll just drag it down in size a little bit. You could, you could um, change the size before or after or even in the Deco Studio side of the program so it's quite a bit of flexibility so I'm just going to drag this raster file down or bitmap file and place it a little higher on the screen and then select trace bitmap now you've got a number of choices here quick trace center line trace or outline trace and within the outline you've got six different trace methods so try each of them some logos will work better with different trace types so I'm going to go for a low quality image. So Corel doesn't actually con con uh, convert, it um, It copies and creates a vector file. So you end up with the, both, both the original and the vector file. And you can do quite a bit of editing here by merging colors, deleting colors, etc. So just uh, come under your colorway tab and you can play with that. You can delete colors, etc. So there we are. And once we've completed that, we simply go OK. I was just thinking there, I'm, I'm going to digitize the lettering using our lettering system. So when I get this back into, uh, into the Corel side of the program, I'm going to ungroup all of the objects and delete the lettering. But as I said, the bitmap file will come across and we'll uh, use that as a template to create the lettering within Deco Studio. So I'll just drag the vector image away. Now if I right click on that and bring up the ungroup all button and you can see that on the right hand side in the object manager all the curves have been highlighted. So I'll just select those curves that I wish to delete and hit the delete button. Now I'll select the remaining part of the logo, the remaining vector part of the logo. Oh, before we go, as I said, mentioned a moment ago, we can resize, change the color, do whatever you want in the Corel part of the software simply by selecting the object and using the resize or reshape tools. But here we'll select all of those objects and simply hit the convert button. We'll come straight back into Deco Studio. Now our image is, is hidden there, so I just hit the uh, shortcut key D to display the image and I'll drag. I'm just having, you can see all the images have been created there. So the first color, second color, and then the third color, the little border around the inner object. Okay, I'll just select them all and drag them up so that they sit on top of the bitmap. Okay, so now we know that um, we can complete the lettering and, and match the original size.
Okay, so bring up, bring up our lettering box and go to text options and type in the word new. Now there'll be a number of ways you can do this. I'll do these words uh, separately because they're a different colour. So I'll just create the text. I haven't paid in. I haven't measured the, the, the lettering or anything. I've just created it there and I'll drag it to make it the correct size. So I've with my reshaping tool and the shortcut for the, that is the letter H, I've dragged each of the letters closer together so I've kerned them. I'll change the colour and I'll just drag the letters out till they match the artwork. So we're lucky to have the Adele font in, in our um, ESA files. We also could have um, if, if need be we could have converted a two type font that's on the system but uh, the Adele file is an ESA file. Now I've simply right clicked on that word new and dragged off right clicked and held and dragged off that's duplicated the word new. Now I just have to change the letters the lettering properties of that object and update. So I'll just do some kerning there as well. Now you may have noticed earlier I'm using the crosshair cursor which allowed me to line the two words up when I was dragging them apart. So I, I lined up the, the word leaf with the nodes of the previous word, the word new. Okay, so I was happy with that. I changed the colour. Now we'll select the word landscaping and it's a running stitch font. Um, yes, just run script. Yep, yeah, run script. So simply create the text and drop it on the screen. Now we could kern these letters but first of all I'll drag them down to a to a approximate size. Now by pushing in from the end I'm sort of adjusting the italics angle of those letters. So you can see the L and the D are standing off. So I just second click the word and there's a rotation point comes up in the middle of that object and by selecting the top middle node I can just re-slant the letters to match our artwork. And select the colour. So in less than 10 minutes, probably about 6 minutes or so, 6.5 minutes, we've created that design. But I'd just like to show you another feature uh, that we can use in Deco Studio. So I've just compressed the, the colour palette there. Now, it would be nice if there was a border around each of these objects. Now you could do it manually, but with the uh, Add Border tool, we can automatically put borders around objects. Now in this case I'm selecting all of those objects that I want the border to go around or a simple offset and we have a zero offset. I've uh, deselected the create uh, fill holes option. Now because I've selected all of the objects I just have to resequence uh, and, and recolor those uh, those pieces that I've added in so you can see the first color the, the lighter green and I'll just drag the borders that belong to those objects so that it stitches them immediately after so the original artwork didn't require that we do this but I think this adds a a nice touch to the design it's very easy to do and we've still got plenty of control there we can select um, selecting those objects those inputs the objects and change their column width if we if we want to and I'm going to do that in this case so they um, they're a little bit close together the objects are all a bit close together so I'll simply select the input C and change the column width reduce it down to about 1.2 1.3 